Okay, let's um, let's get cracking now. It's five thirty-two, so we'll um, we'll uh, get started. So, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm my name's James Edgerly. I'm the sports development manager for Barnet Southgate College. So, welcome to the uh, sports sports academies and general sports um, open evening presentation for this, as I said earlier, our third instalment of the year, virtual virtual delivery, um, uh, not to mention all the sports academy specific ones that we did a couple of months ago. Um, just to also introduce you to Jack Dimitri, who's uh, on the call as well. Um, Jack's both our head physio and also a main grade lecturer at the college. Uh, so he has a dual role there. Jack's going to be chiming in during the academic course discussion section. So to tell you a little bit more about the curriculum courses and give you some detail there and you may uh, offer also some insight into the, the physio element. So welcome. Thanks for coming. The Format will be I'll share my screen shortly and we'll deliver a presentation, maybe sort of 25, 30 minutes, 35 minutes long. Um, we'll try and keep it snappy and informative. Um, then we will throw to some questions at the end. Um, please put all your questions in the Q&A box and um, I'll go through them at the very end. And we'll, we'll do our best to answer every single one. Um, so please, any questions you've got, please stick them in there. There is a small section of the presentation where I do a quick poll. Um, so a poll should flash up on your screen if you could answer those questions as and when, but I'll talk you through it, so don't worry. Um, but yeah, so we'll do that. We should be done and dusted within an hour, um, and hopefully you'll come away with uh, all kinds of knowledge on sports, sports academies and everything else. So thanks for coming. I will share my screen now to get started Ooh, there you go okay hopefully hopefully everyone can see that so every, as i said introductions myself james edgerly and, and jack so just to kick off that's our um that's our bears emblem the bsc bears so if you ever see that on social media either one of the sports specific accounts or the generic bsc sports bsc bears sports account um that's something we started six seven years ago maybe now um as a way to sort of borrow that team identity like the american colleges american unis do to try and bring all the sports and the different student athletes together under one under one banner um so that it doesn't really matter if you're a basketball player a footballer a tennis uh, player or, or a boxer or an athlete whatever it is you might be that you're all part of the same sort of family, part of the same philosophy. So some sports buy into it a bit more than others. Um, obviously, we're associated with some big brands, so um, they kind of supersede the Bears sometimes a little bit. But if you see the BSC Bears, that's what it is, the sports department for, for uh, Barnet and Southgate College. So who are we? A little bit about uh, our backgrounds, our, our general overview. So... We're the sports department for Barnet and Southgate College. We are one of the largest largest sports departments uh, in London and the UK, um, both in terms of the amount of students we've got studying sport, but also the range of student athletes we have associated with sport at Barnet and Southgate College. We currently have, I think, over 550 students studying sport um with the college across one of the programs that we offer on one of the sites and campuses um but we're also one of the most successful sports departments within further education including colleges and schools uh, and how do i quantify that well one it's the number of student athletes that i mentioned we have associated with us the volume of programs that we run um to, to accommodate for those student athletes in terms of the range of different academies um and the various different provision we have for student athletes and, and those within sports both whether they're studying sport or whether they're studying something else and they're a student athlete with us um, but it's also based quite simply on the success that we've had all the team accolades all the individual accolades um, the progressions into professional sport from the programs the progressions into higher education and higher levels of sport um, 
international honours, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, across all our programmes, we would stack up there with uh, with any other institution in the country over the last sort of seven, eight, nine, ten years, um, and we hope to continue that pedigree moving forwards. So the current academies we have um, associated with us in BSc Sport. Uh, are the Tottenham Hotspur Male Programme, the Tottenham Hotspur Women's Football Programme, the NFL Academy, the Athletics Academy based out of Lee Valley, uh, the England Boxing Academy, the Tennis Academy Scholarship Packages and the Wimex Tennis Academy Programme, the Basketball Academy, and then we also have a leadership um, programme as well for those who are studying sport but don't fit into one of those academies either because they're a really good athlete and something that we don't offer or because they don't want to be one of the academies or whatever whatever it might be, they, they would go into the leadership programme. Um, in terms of the overview of the college more generally, I'm sure you're already aware of this as, as applicants to the college or, or in signing up to this webinar, but the college is spread across North London um, and Hertfordshire. So, our biggest and main campuses are Southgate Campus, Wood Street Campus and Collindale, plus we have some provision at Edmonton Green. But they're, they're th those three are our main campuses. And what you study dictates which campus you're going to be based at. Obviously, you guys have signed up to the Sports and Sports Academies one, so I'm coming at this with a dual, dual hat on. But you can, you can study any other course at the college and be a student athlete, hence why it's important to mention the different... Um, different study locations, albeit a lot, mo the majority of our student athletes do want to study sport as well. So the sports department is based at the Southgate campus. Um, that's where the lessons take place. That's sort of the meeting location to get to all the training locations and so forth. Um, if you were to do A-levels, for example, you'd be based at the Wood Street campus, business at the Wood Street campus more often than not. And then the Collindale campus is uh, a specific campus for construction, uh, hair and beauty and some vocational delivery like that. But as I said, what you study dictates what campus you're based at. And the predominant base for the sports team is the Southgate campus. Now, when we say the sports department in terms of the staff, we're not like a uni where my side of the department might sit very independently from the academic side of the department. We're all set within sports. So whilst I manage all the non-academic side and Marco, the curriculum manager, manager, manages the curriculum side of things, we are all one big team, including the teachers, including the coaches, including the support staff, including the sports enrichment personnel, etc. So we are one, one big sports team. So when you come to the college, you'll be on something called a study programme. Now, a study programme is consists of multi, multiple parts. So it's a combination of your main academic qualification. So that could be, in this instance, your BTEC in sport, for example. And we'll come on to the qualifications in a little bit with Jen. But let's say your, your main qualification is your BTEC. Or, for example, if you're a student athlete, you're doing A-levels, that would be your A-levels, for example. Um, so that's that's the largest ingredient as part of your study program. That's the biggest component. You then have the sports academy that you may be affiliated to um, as part of your study program as well. So it's your course, your academy and your training, your games program that's part of that academy. You would have English and maths if you still required it after this year, depending on what grades you get in your GCSEs. Work experience as part of the sports BTEC is a large component. And then your tutorial and pastoral support programs there so all those component parts come together to form your study program i.e what you're involved in as part of being a student at Barnet and Southgate College. To run all the sports academies and to, to our general operations as a college we partner with a lot of industry leading bodies to deliver the academy programs and some of our other programs and we utilize some world-class facilities to base them out of. So we, we are often going, we often, well, we do have to hire a lot of our training venues um, and transport our students to those training venues. For example, Harringay Borough Football Club or Lee Valley Athletic Centre. Um, and we'll, I'll talk more specifically about each um, partner programme in a second. One of the big strengths I always say about uh, our department at the college is the staff and, and the range of experience, the range of knowledge 
that um, these staff members bring with them. So a lot of our staff still practice within the industry on top of their teaching or whatever roles that we have at the college. Um, and we'll bring that experience, bring that knowledge back into what we do at the college. So I myself, for example, work for the Premier League on side of outside of the college. So generally speaking, for the last six years, that's been with the main Premier League club academies using their games programs and facilitating that. But more recently, since COVID, that's been seconded to the working with the first teams uh, and ensuring the COVID compliance there. Uh, Jack, who's also on the call, as I mentioned, he heads our physio clinic. He has his own clinic that uh, he operates outside of the college and he's also involved in the English FA with the under 23 C team. So going away on international duty, working with the with the footballers there. We also have level five personal trainers, sports rehabilitation specialists, um, fitness instructors, strength and conditioning coaches, um, sports coaches. So a whole raft of experiences within our within our department and as I said before we really try and utilize that expertise to try and make our delivery innovative to try and make our offers attractive and to the benefit of our students so how can we improve what we do year on year how can we make changes that's more reflective of what's going on in the industry and, and going to result in better practice So what are we preparing you for? So ultimately, you're you're here to, yes, get a qualification at the college and, and achieve that BTEC or that A-level or MVQ or YMCA award, whatever it might be. But we also want to make you a better athlete within your sports, those of you who are coming onto an academy. But also importantly, we want to develop those life skills and those behaviours in you. So... And it's, it's not just about the knowledge and the skills you're going to get from your course, but it's just what you're going to get from us being a being a student at the college more widely. Um, I would of, I would often say in these presentations that we're we're working on three things with with you. Yes, we're working on you as a student. Yes, we're working on you as an athlete, but we're also working on you as a young person. And as a 16, 17, 18 year old coming into college, it's a very changeable time. Lots of different progressions within your lives, learning to drive, different social groups, whatever it might be. We're looking to try and develop um, that sense of independence and responsibility within each one of our students uh, and prepare you for the next step. So the next step could be university, it could be employment, um, it could be into professional sport, whatever it might be, we're looking to try and equip our students to be able to handle that progression uh, in the future. Okay. So a little bit about our academy programs then using, using that whole knowledge. So each academy is represented there in a logo of some kind. So I'll just work methodically through them uh, and talk about each sport in a bit more detail. So starting in the top left, we have the Tottenham Hotspur program, the male program and the, and the women's football program. Um, we've been with Tottenham Hotspur now for around about 10, this is the 11th year, I believe. 11th or 12th, perhaps even. Yes, uh, 11th, I believe. This is the 11th year we've been with Tottenham Hotspur uh, running a male football programme. It's been a really successful programme uh, over the years. We've we've produced a number of professionals from it. Um, generally speaking, it was uh, one at least one professional contract uh, a year on average for the last sort of eight, nine years, subject to the last year, which has been difficult because of COVID. Uh, and we've achieved some national titles in that time, regional titles, and a lot of players going on to either US um, scholarship offers or into a lot into the same professional arena. So how it works is we're partnered with the football club. It's coaches from Tottenham Hotspur's uh, academy and their, and their staff there who work for us in the daytime uh, under uh, overall my management at the college. Uh, each boy who's on the programme gets a minimum of two training sessions a week plus a games programme. If you're in the elite group, you get four training sessions a week plus a games programme. So the elite group get more, slightly more. Uh, you also get access, free access to the uh, gym, original gym at the college to um, 
build up your SNC and your strength and conditioning uh, components. And then there's the physio treatments as well, which we'll come on to a little bit later. So that's a very brief overview on the Top Knots for Male programme. Uh, with the women's programme, we've been running a women's football programme for nine years now. Uh, this is its 10th year. Again, a really successful programme uh, over the years um, with a number of the Spurs WSL, sorry, the Spurs women, the Top Hotspur women's first team players over, the, over that period coming from uh, this college programme. It's always been, it was always was the sort of de facto youth team for Tottenham Hotspur women. Now, with the success of the senior side going into the WSL Academy, we've had to take on a slightly different element within the pathway because they're having to, they've had to launch WSL Academy, which we support. So our women's football programme sits just underneath the WSL Academy and is a feeder for the WSL Academy. So girls who are talented female footballers who are not quite ready to progress into the WSL Academy. The idea is you'd come to our college programme, which is a really high level of football, develop under the Spurs coaches. So Jenna, who's our head coach, has also got a dual role with the WSL Academy. And then if you're good enough, you can then progress into the WSL Academy or into other avenues of football after your time with the college. Again, the girls get two a minimum of two field practice sessions a week, plus a games programme, three if there's no games programme. And then from next year, they'll be sharing the Monday night performance night in the uh, at the college in the NFL Academy gym alongside Tottenham Hotspur women. Um, so that, that adds up an additional training session there. Uh, and there's some other provision planned for next year as, uh, as well. It is the premier... Tottenham Hotspur Women's College program. So you may have seen a couple of other iterations, but ours is the flagship. Ours is the main progression point into the WSL Academy. Um, as I said, we've probably produced around 10 to 12 first team Tottenham Hotspur Women's first team players, a number of girls going on to US scholarships, um, and a lot of uh, international players, both the Union College team, and we've got a current Welsh international as well, and a current. We've had current England Lioness is at the college and also in the last two years, a previous England Lioness uh, now who's playing for the women's top knots for women's first team in the WSL. In fact, there's two graduates who are in the WSL squad at the moment and there was four in the last year. So that's the Tottenham Hotspur Women's Programme. Then we have, of course, the NFL Academy and I'm sure that's what a few people have tuned in to see. So that was a programme... We launched in 2019. It is the official part of their talent pathway about trying to develop student athletes in that sport to progress on to um, US college scholarship offers in the States in that sport. The provision for that is uh, three field practice sessions a week, three uh, film classes a week. So they're in the classroom learning with their positional coaches, learning about the playbook, learning about... Um, skills within that position group and then three to four lifting sessions a week in the snc in the in the nfl academy gym so it's a really full-on timetable for those on that program again come to the college study a qualification that's the same with all of these programs your main qual and then you get to access this academy on top of that i think we're at around 25 to 30 division one ncaa scholarship offers amongst the group now for next year so real big impact in a short space of time so far um the coaches from the from the program are all experienced in the sport so it's and it's obviously backed by the nfl and particularly uh, linking with the international player pathway programs there uh, we have an England boxing program, so the Boxing Academy, uh, that's eight hours a week of provision. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Fridays across three days, um, as well as the boxing specific training that you get to do. Um, there's also vocational courses as part of that. So boxing leaders awards, level one coaching badges, level two coaching badges. Um, but it's mostly about the training, added training opportunity, the sparring, uh, if you're of a certain level and if you've got your boxing medical and your boxing license um and what we say for that and what we say for actually for a lot of our programs is we would we're not encouraging you to leave any partner club that you may be at this is all an additionality for you to access so if you're already a boxer at a club that's great stay boxing at that club 
um, the great thing about us working with England Boxing is our coaches probably know your coaches and will look to work with your existing coaches to benefit your training provision. So if your part of your hip club coach wants us to work on a technical aspect of your boxing, maybe the jab or whatever it might be, and then they can focus on the sparring, we'll do that. Or it might be flipped. They might want to work on the technical side and we'll work on the fitness or the sparring or whatever it might be. So it's a chance, it's a great chance to access uh, additional training there. And so far in the trials, we've had some really nice boxes. A lot of the open days, sorry, come to us and yeah, looking at some, some nice looking boxes for next year. And we've had some really successful ones over the years as well. Um, the athletics program, the Athletics Academy, we're partnered with uh, Imperium Sports. So Imperium is uh, a collaboration between Mark Findlay, who is a former Great Britain athlete, um, and Gemma, who has also competed for Great Britain in the, pen, in the heptathlon, sorry, not pentathlon, heptathlon. Um, with the athletics program, again, like the boxing, if you're already with an athletics club or coach, don't have to leave that coach. It's up to, up to you what you want to do. Um, we ask for our athletes on the athletics program to do a minimum of two training sessions a week with us. And if you're in the elite group and you want to access everything that we offer, they can do up to four. And then how it works is, again, a dialogue with that individual student athlete to say, do you just want to do SNC with us and do your track based or event based work with your coach? Or do you want to do a, a bit of a split? Totally up to you. We're probably known for being a bit of a, a sprint group specialist. So we've got a lot of very high caliber sprinters in our in our stable, but we do cater for every event within the sport. Um, and again, really successful program uh, in terms of students going to national championships and progressing into, into the sport at a high level and, and also students achieving their Great Britain vest as well. Then we have the Basketball Academy with Run and Jump Sports. So Run and Jumps is essentially Lloyd Gardner's company. Lloyd Gardner is our performance director for the basketball. We came to work with Lloyd uh, as a result of the relationship with London City Royals, where he was the head coach of the first team, which were really successful until unfortunately they, the club uh, encountered some financial problems, so uh, couldn't run any longer. So we sort of inherited Lloyd as a result of that, which was really lucky for us because he is probably the best basketball coach in the country for young student players student basketballers uh before that before his stint with london city royals he was the director of basketball at barking abbey and built that program to what it was uh, and he's currently the head coach of the manchester giants in the bbl as well so under his stewardship you get to access uh, and with his team, there's, again, two training sessions a week, team practice, a games programme on a Wednesday or another team practice where there's no game or fixture. Uh, and then we've got some individual skill set, skill session, morning sessions as well, uh, Mondays and Thursday mornings. So a um, lot of training accessible there. And we've got a real ambitious scope with the basketball to be an EABL programme within five years um, and a high performing hitter in that sport. Uh, and then finally, we have the Tennis uh, Academy, although I note there was no tennis uh, players on the school, but in case you know someone who is or this is recorded, um, the scholarship programme for the Tennis uh, Academy splits into three tiers. So the tier one is for your best players, um, you're sort of rated 1.1s to, to 6.2s. They are funded by the college to access around eight to nine hours a week of tennis provision with our partners at Wimex Tennis Academy. So they didn't fit into their performance squads with UEL or their travelling pros. Um, and they get an SNC programme as part of that, again, delivered by Wimex. If you're in tier two, and that's sort of 7.1 to 8.2 or 8.1 kind of level, you get slightly less provision it's sort of five to six hours a week and then the tier threes is sort of three hours a week um but also the workforce angle so we do put you through your lta level one lta level two and we mix are a uh, vocational training provider and, and a, a coaching excellence center for for the lta so they deliver a lot of the tennis coaching badges so it's a unique program of its kind, pretty much, pretty much in the country. I don't know any other college that does a tennis program like we do. 
Um, and in the last two years alone, we've had three or four, three students go on to full scholarships in the States and one go on to the tour. So that's the kind of level of student athlete that we're producing from that programme. Sporting and Up is a brand centred around enrichment and tax I'll come on to shortly. So at this point, I'm just going to throw over to, um, to Jack, who's going to tell you a little bit more about the curriculum side of sports. So if, if you're a student athlete wanting to come and study sport as well, um, then this bit is also for you, knowing about what courses within the sports department you can do that's about sport. Um, so over to you, Jack. Thank you, James. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm just going to talk very briefly about our curriculum and also the uh, entry criteria um, uh, and how you will be um, placed into um, what level of education in the sports department. Um, college has been going for the sports department here is very, very popular. It's been going for many years. And uh, like James said, we have some great staff, but it's all about students um students have a lot to say and we listen to what they say because we want to get things right and um the way we work is uh we set things out um and things go well but there's always room for improvement and we do listen and we do improve year on year um co courses that we offer are varied varied levels from uh, level one level two level three which i'll go on to in a moment. Um, typically, um, level one is the entry requirements are two GCSEs. Um, so when you finish your GCSEs, you can come out of school and you apply and come to college. Your, your grades will come out in August at some time and we will gather those grades and you guys will come in and we will look at your grades and then, then we'll decide at which level to pitch you guys at. Um, the, as I said, level one is a two GCSE entry criteria. Level two, um, the BTEC first certificate in sport has an entry criteria of four GCSEs, um, grades nine to three, which is equivalent to A, A to D. Um, but if also you completed your BTEC level one introductory diploma, uh, then you will progress on to level two, all things being equal, things like attendance, punctuality and application, etc. So um, moving on to level three, uh, it's your BTEC national diploma and also BTEC national extended diploma. And with these, uh, the entry criteria for your level three diploma is five GCSEs grade uh, nine to four, which is equivalent to the old A to C. Or if you've completed the level two uh, certificate in sport and achieved the merit, then you can progress on to the BTEC level three. The entry criteria for the level three extended diploma is six GCSEs uh, grade nine to four, which is equivalent to A to C. Uh, and that includes maths and English. Now, I'm glad that's been added in there. Um, the extended diploma is a, quite a comprehensive package, really. There's more studying in that. There's more studying involved. And so the time is quite precious. And we, we need to, we don't have the opportunity for people to take maths or English GCSEs. That's why it's quite a high entry criteria with six uh, grades nine to four, including maths and English. With the other, with your level three BTEC national diploma, level two and, and um, introduction diploma, of course, there is a, a timetable that does allow for GCSE maths and English. My advice to anyone who's thinking about doing these courses is get your maths and English GCSEs out of the way because. Um, you can really enjoy the rest of the program then. So whilst you're at school now, uh, the maths and English is vital. Um, get that done, get it out of the way, get your grades, and then you can really enjoy the rest of the program without having to retake maths and English. Um, okay, James. Uh, new course. We have this uh, new course, um, 
BTEC her National Extended Diploma in Esports. Now, Esports uh, is starting uh, this year. Six GCSEs grade nine to four or HSE equivalent, including maths and English, or a BTEC level two certificate uh, merit grade. Um, and this is a new um, qualification that we're aiming at people interested in the gaming industry. It's a very popular um, section at the moment. I think this will pick up pretty, pretty uh, rapidly, to be quite honest. And it's all about skills and strategies, uh, video production and gaming, um, and how you would look into that industry. You don't just build into the industry, but you actually participate, um, you know, how you, gaming is part of it. So, um, you know, people that are pay, playing um, FIFA, et cetera, and have an interest in that, that's the kind of thing that you do, not restricted to just that, but we're looking into the industry and how it's been made popular and how uh, you can develop that. Um, but there's more information on uh, e-gaming on our uh, website, so you can um, just check for more information on that. Okay, vocational routes. Uh, we do have uh, MVQ um, certificate and activity leadership. So this is more on the coaching side of things. So the entry criteria for this, if you don't want to go down the academics per se, but you have more coaching um, skills, then we th this course is quite popular because um, it has an entry criteria of four GCSEs, grade nine to three. Uh, or a uh, completed successful uh, level one introductory diploma. Um, and this is quite popular because it's more hands on. You know, we'll, for example, we take the group to schools where they will develop uh, coaching strategies for, for the students in the schools and deliver those, and you're graded accordingly. And there, there's some great um, qualities that are developed, you know, whilst you're uh, doing this course. Uh, there's also a level two YMCA diploma in personal training and gym instruction. Uh, entry criteria for that is a level three diploma. Um, five GCSEs grade nine to four or a successful completion to a merit standard of the BTEC level two certificate. Uh, moving on from the level two, then can, you can then progress on to the level three YMCA certificate in personal training and gym instruction. Um, to get onto that, of course, you have to complete the level two uh, YMCA diploma. Uh, so it's a progression on from now. Um, again, this is very popular. We do get a, a lot of students that complete this and then find work in the industry, working in gyms and uh, sports clubs, etc. Right. Um, Higher education, we do have uh, HNCs and HND, which is High National Certificate and High National Diploma in Sport and Exercise Science. Um, this is aimed at people that, if you finish your level three uh, extended uh, diploma or your level three national diploma, but um, you, if you need to gain more um, points to get into university, you can do the HNC, uh, which will gain you uh, more UCAS points, uh, and it is more cost effective than uh, university tuition. The fee is, I think, about two thirds of the university tuition. Um, it's more personalised and basically it gives you entry into uh, year two undergraduate in many universities, depending on the course that you want to do and the university you want to attend, which obviously has to um, be uh, looked at prior to, to this just to make sure that it is appropriate. Um, that's it. That's yeah. it. Anything else there, James? No, I think that's it. The, the NFL coaching account is not actually something that's been launched yet, it's in production, but uh, and we're also launching um, an elite basketball HNC program, but again. Uh, I can talk to that about that specifically to any candidates who are post FE, uh, i.e., higher education candidates who are basketball. So I won't I won't dwell on it to to the larger group. So thanks, Jack. So that's um, that's an overview of um, the academic courses within the sports department. As Jack said, uh, and I think the key message is, regardless of whatever results you have or come in with, we'll have a course for you. It's just depending on what 
what level it co you come in at. So as Jack went through all the all the entry requirements for the various levels there. So if it's two GCCs and it's level one, if it's six GCCs and it's extended diploma, for example, um, and the level three and the level three extended diploma are the, the A-level equivalent courses. So the two A-level for the, for the level three and the three A-level for the extended diploma. So um, TAS, so I mentioned it earlier. So TAS stands for Talented Athlete Scholarship Scheme. Um, and we are what's known as a TAS dual career accredited centre. So we were the first FE college in the country to have this uh, status. And we're still, I think, the only FE college in, uh, one of the only FE colleges in London and the South East to have this status. And essentially it's an accreditation of excellence. It's a, a standard marker to say that if you are a national or international level athlete in your sport and you're still in full-time education, you're aged 16 to 24, you should come and study at, uh, at Barnet and Southgate College because we have a talented athlete policy. We're committed to working with uh, talented athletes to make sure that they're free to go away and compete in their competitions. Uh, for example, at our tennis open day on Saturday, there's a girl uh, applicant for next year who, um, may be competing in junior Wimbledon and she wouldn't want to go away to compete on in the ITF tournaments around Europe. Our approach is that's fine, but we need to manage it alongside your, your coach and or our coaches if they're in our academies and really look at the, the calendar and map it out and see right where the, where are the academic pinch points, where are the sporting pinch points and try and make sure that you can succeed both in your sport, but also in your course. Um, because it more and more, uh, more and more it's the case within sport that they encourage, certainly the, the, the Olympic sports, the sort of outside of football, really, uh, that dual career is a, is a motto that's embraced because most of the time you're not going to earn enough money even if you make it professionally, to sustain you for the rest of your life and you're going to have to have a career after it. So you're going to need those qualifications, you're going to need those skills and behaviours and knowledge to try and formulate that career. We also offer additional support workshops, so nutrition, uh, goal setting, um, injury prevention, US scholarship information, whatever it might be, to our TAS athletes to support them and um, what it is like to be a student athlete of a high level, because it is an extra demanding thing to be an international or national level athlete in your sport and still be trying to succeed in in the classroom. And um, we it's shown that the, the, the talented athletes are disciplined and, and can handle that, but sometimes they need them extra support from us. And that's where we, we come in. So in terms of what else we have, so we have uh, the physio clinic at the college. Jack, I might throw to you briefly again to, to talk about the physio provision at the college. That's cool. okay. And about yourself and your experience. Your hey, so I'm a, I'm a chartered physiotherapist. I have been for too many years. Um, <laughs> I've also been lecturing here at the college for about 16 years. Uh, and my time is divided between um, providing physiotherapy provisions for our athletes and lecturing. So our paths cross uh, all the time. Um, as James said, I also work in private practice and I work with the England um, under 23, also known as the England C team. Um, basically what we do is um, as a sports um, student uh, and assigned to an academy, wh wh whatever sport that you do, you will be entitled to, to physiotherapy treatment. We have a clinic that's run throughout the week uh, on, on set days and times and uh, that's run by myself and also a group of final year undergrad uh, students from universities who uh, work very closely with us so they complete their their degree and uh, they get the experience that uh, they need to to achieve that so um, we also cover um, match day um, um, games over at with the Tottenham Hospital Foundation. So on match days, on Wednesdays, I'll be on the sidelines in the dugout with my team of physio. So we will cover those games. That's for the Tottenham Foundation for the boys and the girls. Um, the clinics are very well equipped um, uh, and 
basically what we treat that uh, that area with a lot of respect simply because you know there's a lot of equipment around and um you know the, the students will come in uh, they'll fill in a form we'll go through the injury what happened when it happened how it happened etc so there's a lot of paperwork on our side of things and then we'll assess you we'll diagnose you we'll treat you then we'll give you a rehabilitation program and we'll work very closely with emily who runs the uh, the gym uh, and you'll strengthen we'll strengthen you get you back to full speed then we'll clear you to go back to your um training and then from training, then you'll go on to um, uh, match fitness and so on and, and return back to your normal activity. So that, that's the physiotherapy department. Um, it's quite busy. Um, it's, um, you know, it's something that we take quite seriously and uh, it works very well and it's all there for you free of charge. Thanks, Jack. Uh, speaking of free of charge, we also have two gyms at the Southgate campus. We have the original gym, uh, which, as Jack mentioned, Emily runs and within the opening hours, that's free to access for our student athletes to go and use of their own accord or have a program written for them by Emily or do some injury rehabilitation with Emily. Um, and that's free for them to drop in whenever that's open. Uh, we also have the NFL Academy gym that you can see a little picture of there. Uh, you have to go in there with an S&C coach, but some of the academies go in there with bespoke S&C sessions, including obviously the NFL Academy. Uh, in terms of transport, as I mentioned, all our training locations are remote pretty much except for the boxing. So we do provide minibus transport to and from uh, Southgate campus to the training and away games. Um, we also do campus pickups from Wood Street to Southgate uh, on three days a week to help with the students who may be studying A-levels but are a student athlete or business and are a student athlete. Uh, the NFL Academy has also got a student development and welfare officer who helps to, a bit like the TAS support stuff really, to help with the achievement of uh, the NFL Academy athletes and make sure that their, their safeguarding and well-being is looked after. So just finally, what do we expect from you guys as, as future athletes? So that's George there, who's uh, one of the athletes who achieved this Great Britain Vest. And uh, as, as an example, it's meant to show that uh, highest standards possible, I guess. So. Um, it essentially boils down to four things. Turn up, turn up on time, apply yourself and meet your coursework deadlines. And those, if you do those four things, you hopefully this presentation has alluded to that there's a lot of time, effort, money, uh, thought invested into the what we do at the College for Sports, uh, both the curriculum side, but also the non-curriculum side. Um, and a lot of opportunities for you. Um, and to, do, to take advantage of those opportunities, you've got to do those four things that we offer because the academics come first. The education is the priority. If you start to fall behind with your work or you don't apply yourself in class or with behaviour, you fall short to the expected standards, you will be withdrawn from fixtures or you will have certain privileges taken away from you. So Jack will testify this year, we have an at-risk list of students that get sent to us uh, on the non-academic side and we work with the teaching team to look at right which boys or girls or whatever it might be are behind. What do they need to do to improve? OK, we're not going to select them this week. And uh, it's about managing your time as an applicant. So we're not school. You're not in 8.30 to 3.30 every day. You'll have your academic timetable. You'll have your training timetable and your games programme, your fixtures selected for you, etc. Outside of those times, it's, it's about you and you doing what you need to do. You'll have a lot of coursework potentially. You might need to be going to the gym to work on your physical profiling or doing rehabilitation from injury. You need to sort of learn to to embrace the managing your time and, and, and having that set up like they do more at university and it's preparing you for that next step in that respect. Okay, just finally, for those who may be interested in cross-college enrichment, cross -college enrichment We've had many Sport England projects funded over the last few years, tackling activity being the latest one. And we also have a general sports enrichment programme that's been delivered by Activity Hub. Essentially, there's a whole wide range of provisions for students to do drop in sport. And that's mainly just aimed at students who are not sports students or not student athletes. So it's a chance for students to just go and play some table tennis or some basketball or some volleyball. 
uh, in one of the student uh, clubs or, or, or part of the enrichment timetable. And essentially it boils down to getting students active and physically healthy and enjoying sport, really. It's all free of charge, timetables up on uh, the various college platforms uh, when you enrol. And there's a big variety across, uh, mainly delivered at the Southgate campus, but we do try and do some of the other campuses as well. So that's that's it, really. Uh, any questions on any of those uh, headline areas that you may have? There's a sort of profile of some of our students there on 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 the left. Um, just in terms of follow further follow ups, we've got our next trial dates for some of the sports programs. So there's the dates written there. If you do want to apply for one of the sports academies, I'm sure Chris will pop the link to the sports registration form in the chat. So please get your application in. If you've applied already, you don't need to do it again. Uh, we'll, we'll have your details already and you should have already been invited to either a previous trial if you applied before those dates or you will be invited to the next one. But if you're not sure, do apply again. And if you want, if you are interested, please apply through the link that Chris will put on the, on the chat box. Um, I'd also encourage you to visit the individual academy sports pages on the website because hosted or embedded within them is other webinars that I've done with the head coaches of each programme, which go into a lot more detail about each uh, sports academy and how it operates and the benefits and the advantages and the opportunities uh, and the profiles of the coaches on those ones. Again, if you want to contact me directly, there's my email address. There's also the sports trials inbox. And there's our, oh, I should probably hide that. Often there's our um, sports department social media accounts. Each, some of the individual sports has also got their own uh, social media handles. Okay, that's it. So if I stop sharing my screen, there we go, I'm back. Um, if there are any questions, let's let me dip into the Q and A box now, and Jack and I will do our best to to answer them. So, um, okay, great first question off the bat. Hello, I applied for a sports course and they gave me an offer, but I don't know the next step. Can you guide me, please? Okay, brilliant question to start with. If you've been made an offer, um, you just need to log back into your portal and accept the offer. Um, and then you'll in the future receive all the uh, information from the admissions department regarding enrollment as and when that gets released. So if you're a GCSE student, your enrollment day will probably commence from main enrollment, I imagine, but that information will be sent to you by the admissions department. So go log back into your portal. If you're not sure um, you remember your logins, you can contact the college to be put through to the admissions department to try and accept your offer. Uh, and then it's just a case of keep checking your, your emails, both your inbox, but also your junk mail, mail folder, just in case uh, further information goes there. And um, hopefully I've answered that one. And, and if the guys from marketing in the background have anything further to add, they can put it in the chat box. What other academies other than the THFC ladies is open for girls? Um, so the tennis program is male and female, the boxing is male and female, the athletics is male and female. Um, obviously the, the women's football program is, is women. The leadership is male and female. In terms of basketball, we're not launching a women's academy next year, but we're going to have a women's basketball session prominently for as part of the enrichment program. And we'll see what sort of take up there is there and we may be launching a team off the back of that we we're very keen to get a women's basketball program but it's a case of do we launch an academy and hope to recruit or let's see which students we happen to have at the college and try and put on some provision for them there and then grow from there because our volleyball team for example has been very successful over the years which is more like a university student club rather than an academy so um so yeah, but if you if you Jess Gordon who asked that question, if you do have a specific sport that you compete in, um, or you want to have that further discussion, drop me an email and we can we can discuss that in more more detail. Hi, I finished ESL entry three recently, and I want to know can I apply for a sports course 
yes. Yes, you can. I don't know your specific situation, but you absolutely can. Um, probably would be a level one sport, I imagine. Um, but it depends on your your wider profile. But the I, I would probably go online and apply for the BTEC level one in sport. And then the teachers will interview you at enrolment um, and make a better assessment on that one. Uh, is that fair? fair thing to answer with that Jack is that sound about right yeah I think so it, you need more information really but it might be a bridging course or it might be a level one course it just depends yeah can I apply for fitness without any qualification uh you can apply for the YMCA level two I mean you can't apply for it without a qualification you're going to need uh, the entry requirements but um, the YMCA level two is the first point you come in at. You can't apply straight for the YMCA level three. You have to have done the YMCA level two. And the YMCA level two entry requirements, Jack went over in uh, in his section. So you do need to meet the entry requirements for that YMCA uh, level two fitness course. But again, apply, for, apply and then the teachers will have those discussions with you uh, when you come to enrol. Is the NFL Academy open to girls? Um, it's all male at the moment um the nfl as a sport technically is not um restricted just to males it's based on physical profile i guess you know the best athletes um so we haven't had any women on the program so far um we might be looking to launch a women's program uh nfl program in in, in the forthcoming years my son did the football trials earlier this month and was told we'll get feedback, but nothing. Was that the football trials with Tottenham Hotspur? I'm not sure. Everyone's been sent correspondence regarding the Tottenham Hotspur trials. Jennifer Azik, who asked that question, if you can email me, um, james.edgley at barnetinsouthgate.ac.uk, if you can email me um, with your specific um situation and i'll i'll speak to you separately to get to the bottom of that uh, I, if i'm a footballer but currently have an injury would i do just the theory side of sport or do physio instead of the lesson um well in terms of the curriculum you you would do your lessons um most of that is theoretical anyway there might be a couple of units which are more practically based um instead of training yes you'd attend jack in clinic and and he would write you a program and you do that with emily in the gym for for rehab uh depends on the extent of your injury uh, adrian so um yeah if it's a long-term injury you would liaise with jack when when you came to enroll and you started with us and then we try and get you back to fitness um i guess and back involved in the sport but yes, you would go to clinic instead of uh, training, but you'd still be expected to go to your lessons uh, as normal. And if you couldn't participate in the lesson because it was a practical unit, then the teachers would accommodate that. Is that about right, Jam? That's correct. Yeah, you have to attend all your, your uh, lessons as normal. That doesn't change at all. But in, if you're injured, instead of going to your training session, you will come to the treatment room uh, to be assessed and treated. Okay, BTEC Level 3 Diploma, how many years of study is that compared to the Level 3 Extended Level 3 Diploma? They're both the same. They're both two year, uh, they're both a two year program. The Level 3 and the Level 3 Extended, they're both Level 3 courses. They're both two years. The difference between the Extended and the Diploma is you do more modules in the Extended Diploma, hence why it's worth more UCAS points. Um, and can you go from the B, from the Level 3 Diploma to Extended Diploma? So you can start in year one doing the extended certificate rather than the foundation diploma and then top up but it's unusual and it's a bit complicated so but if if you need that extra year to achieve your english and maths and you've shown yourself over that year to be a really um proficient student a hard working student then it has been done um in the past and you, i think you want to be a te PE teacher it says well you can go and be a p teacher with the level three diploma because that will get you into university um, to, and then you go from there to do an undergraduate and a PGCE, so that's fine. I live in Southampton, is accommodation, is accommodation offered if I attend the college? Um, we work with British Council registered homestay providers to facilitate you staying with host families. 
So that's mainly prominent in the NFL Academy, although not strictly limited to that. Um, so you would liaise through that account, British Council registered homestay provider to be placed into a, a host family. And then there's a contract between you and the host family, well, your parents and the host family and the British Council registered uh, company who have facilitated it. Um, the cost of those can vary depending on which zone of London you are and what level of board, bed, breakfast, etc. that you want. Um, if you want more information on that, email me and we can provide you with that. How long does the course application take to be approved? Uh, as in, if you've applied for a course, um, I think they say there's a target of they need to get back to you within two weeks of your course application. Now, uh, if you've not heard in longer than that time, check your junk mail just in case it's gone to there. You can always log back into the portal that you've applied through and it should update on there or give us a shout at the college to chase up your application. How many BTECs can you do uh, one at, at a time? You, you know, if you're on the level three diploma in sport, you're doing the level three diploma in sport. That's all you can do. You can't do a BTEC in sport, a BTEC in business and a BTEC in something else. We, we're not like um, a school uh, where they do the, the lower levels of BTECs, the awards. That's why you do three. We do the diplomas and the extended diplomas. Um, but then you can do multiple BTECs year after year. So if you start on the level two, you can then do the level three in the second year, blah, blah, blah. Uh, is the volleyball part of an academy? No, it's not. It's a enrichment program that's just really successful. If not, how do I access it? When you enrol, you just turn up to the sessions and, and, and participate and have a go. And they're a very welcoming crowd and um, big volleyball enthusiasts. So, uh, that's part of delivered as part of the enrichment team. Is there any payment you need to make for anything? Uh, the only payment we ask you to make is in most of the academies is towards your kit. And um, the kit varies depending on which program you're in uh, and you'll get information on that uh, as and when you apply and trial and are offered a place on the relevant academy program, but it's all sort of branded Nike kit. Um, the only one you don't have to pay for is the NFL Academy because they're, they're sponsored by Nike. Um, but everything else is Nike kit, except the basketball, which is uh, a basketball specific brand called Always Balling. So, uh, any open days? Question mark. I'm not sure what you mean by that exactly, but um, we have the trial days, which I mentioned at the end of the presentation. Um, which, if you've applied for an academy, you'll be invited to there. I guess kind of practical open days as well. Um, if you're talking about just general college open days because of the national restrictions, um, they're slightly tricky uh, this year, but keep checking the website in case stuff changes from the marketing department and um, you'll be notified, I guess. Um, that's all the questions. So we've rattled through that, I've sort of overrun by four minutes, that's, I promise, but um, Hopefully that was informative for everyone. Um, hopefully you got everything for, out of it. Check the chat, note down the various links that Chris has put in there, my email, the sports uh, academy registration form, uh, applying for courses, do get your applications in because it's just an application and you can make your decisions more after that. Um, but other than that, thank you for attending. Uh, we hope to see you at one of the trials and uh, or in enrolments and um, take care. Hopefully England do the business tonight and uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Thank you, everyone.